What's up guys, coming at you with another topic today that you need to talk about and that is red shirting versus gray shirting and kind of what it is and we'll go over that and what all that is later in the video but uh, today I'm out here with Malcolm and we're going to get a lift in while we talk about that so what's up Malcolm? Hey, how are we doing today? Okay, so uh, let's just jump into the video, cue intro. All right guys, we're a little bit into the workout now already, so let's just start it off with the difference between red shirt and gray shirt, and kind of what you guys should look for and how you decide if you're gonna do one of those two or if it's up to you at all. So first of all, what a red shirt is, is basically you are on the team and you're enrolled in school, uh, but you're not playing in any of the games. I think we all kind of know what red shirting is, but in case you guys don't know, uh, red shirting uh, again is when you're enrolled in school, but you're not playing in any of the games now The rules with the NCAA have kind of uh, shifted around in recent years as far as uh, What red shirts are allowed to do during the season? So basically what it is is now you're allowed to be in the games for four games throughout the year And from what I believe it is any four games in the season So as long as you don't go in in any regular season game or postseason for more than four games, uh, you will retain your red shirt year. So just to be clear, so you guys don't confuse with what I just said, as long as you don't go in for more than four games, your freshman year, you will be able to retain your red shirt year and not use a year of eligibility. However, your clock will start for your NCAA countdown and you have five years to play for four no matter what, once you start your clock, it doesn't stop unless there's a special circumstance that will accommodate for this and that's usually like an extra injury that you might get an extra year on top of that, like you get a six year. So that's just one of the few examples where you can stop the clock, but it doesn't usually happen. So once you start the clock, it doesn't really stop for many people at all. Now that you guys basically know what a red shirt is, let's go ahead and I'm gonna hit a couple more sets and I'll check back in with you guys after and we're gonna talk about what a gray shirt is. So I'll see you then. <laughs> Clash of Clans. Hey bro, don't look at my don't look at my hey yes. why are you playing Clash of Clans during the workout? Bro, bro that game's like five years old. And I've had it for five years. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that you guys know what red shirts are, let's give a little talk to what gray shirts are and what exactly they are. So basically gray shirts are people who are on a team but are not enrolled full-time in school. This way they don't start their eligibility clock for D1 and they get to save that year essentially. Now, they're obviously not allowed to play in, in any of the games just like the red shirts aren't allowed to, but they are enrolled in school. So you're getting through your schooling a little bit slower than the other people who might be redshirting or are just enrolled in school normally you cannot be full-time and be a gray shirt I just want to make that very clear now with my experience with gray shirts and uh, everything that I understand about it they are allowed to practice with the team work out with the team and uh, basically be a part of the team they cannot go and play in the games just like the red shirts but one of the main differences between them and a red shirt again is the way that they're enrolled in school they cannot be full-time like I said said while that you know might be cool if you don't want to have a ton of school you are moving along slower in school than uh, your counterparts that are redshirting or just enrolled in school normally now there's a lot of factors that go into weighing whether you should redshirt or gray shirt and deciding that can be a really big decision so you want to make sure you know as much about both as possible but before we talk about what you should do in your situation let's go ahead and get this other set in and uh, I'll check back in with you guys afterwards
All right, guys, we're close to the end of the workout now. So let's talk about the choices between going and being a red shirt and going and being a gray shirt and what really you should do and you know how you make that kind of decision. So first and foremost, it's really your decision. So let me just throw that out there right now. Uh, it's hard for me to say anything to where I'd be able to make the choice for you. It's uh, very circumstantial to your circumstance. So if I say you're this height and this weight and you only get so much playing time and I say, oh, you should gray shirt or something and then you end up gray shirting and it turns out for the worse, I do not want to be the reason for that, honestly. But I do want to give you guys the options and the, the reasons why you might want to look into either one of these. So let me just say if you are a freshman going into college and you think you want to get a little bit bigger a little bit stronger but you don't want to get behind in school and you want to graduate on time and you want to think about your future before you start just taking time off because of football then I would suggest maybe you should think about being a red shirt instead of a gray shirt because you get that advantage of being a person who is able to take 12 credits or 15 or whatever you're gonna be full-time so that sets you up on a good path to graduating eventually and if you feel like it you could grad transfer and that you'd be in a better situation and have more years of eligibility left if you did decide to do that and if you want to know more about transferring actually I do have a video about it and I'll link it right here so go ahead and check that out as well but if you do want to take that uh, year or take that semester and maybe not be full-time all the way just yet but you definitely still want to be with the team and you want to practice with them and you want to you want to be around the other teammates so you can get that competitive edge with you then maybe you should check into gray shirting and looking into what your coach might think about that but let me just say that neither of these in the end is fully your decision you can tell the coach your intention of what you want to do but ultimately it is his team and he will tell you what he does want you to do and if you don't want to do it then that's a discussion between the two of you ultimately it's not fully up to you if you want a red shirt or gray shirt you can tell them your intentions like i said but it's a give and take on whether they'll listen and uh, if they'll actually let you red shirt or gray shirt so that's something for a conversation to have between you and your coach so hopefully i was able to actually help you guys in making this decision that can be important to deciding how your college route does go and what you're stepping into when you go to these different universities. If you guys have any more questions for me or any ideas for any other topics that you want to see in the future, go ahead and put that down in the comments down below. I'd be really interested to hear it because uh, I just want to hear you know comments from you guys and what you guys think about the content and where you want to see it go. So let me know about that and uh, if you like this content go ahead and click the like button. It really does help the channel uh, and if you want to see more from me go ahead and hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell right next to it so you can get a notification when i upload a video and uh this has been fun i'm gonna go ahead and finish out my workout so you guys can check that out and uh thank you guys and peace